Hello, my name is Bruce and welcome back to part two of our lesson entitled Ears to Hear. And as we left off on part one, we left with Jesus explaining to the disciples why he was now speaking in parables. And as we pick up here in part two, we start with verse, <clears throat> excuse me, we start with verse 14. Verse 14, and in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Esaias, which have said by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. And so we see immediately here, this is again the third, the third reason as to why Jesus is speaking in parables now, and it's to fulfill prophecy, right? And, and again, we know that the word of God is, is, is true. And we know that, you know, what he said would come to fruition. And here you see Isaiah's words coming to fruition. And he and going back into his day as he was dealing with a very uh, corrupt um, children of Israel who were, you know, on their way to captivity. Um, he would he would he would say, you know. Or he would go off and he, he would go off to and he would go to the people, excuse me, and he would give them the words of God. And yet, unfortunately, they just kept getting their hearts kept getting harder and harder and harder and harder until they got to the point where God was like, OK, that's enough. Judgment is coming. And so, again, here we see that being fulfilled here in verse 14, verse 15. For this people's heart is waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and shall understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. And so again, he's he's oh, he's explaining again, you know, they have been completely they have rejected God. Right. And, and even still, he's saying that if they would just turn from their hard heartedness, if they would allow for that seed to 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 take root and 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 flourish, well, he would be right there to bless and he or he would be right there to heal them. Right. But unfortunately, because they had got to a point where they didn't want to hear the word of God anymore, there was really nothing that 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 would <laughs> there was really nothing that they were going to do on their own to kind of rectify the situation and God was going to allow them to freely walk their own path and accept the fate that was going to come their way. As we look at practical point number four, which covers 14 and 15, hearing God's truth is of no value unless the hearing is accompanied by faith. Again, hearing God's truth is of no value unless the hearing is accompanied by faith. So again, goes back to what we were saying in part one, that without spiritual uh, discernment, it is difficult to understand things of a spiritual nature, right? And so again, if, 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 if you've not availed yourself, if, if you've not um, put your trust in him and, and put your faith in him, then again, it's just words on the page, you know? And as we spoke in part one, you know, everyone hears it different. Spiritually mature people hear it one way, immature people hear it another way, and unnatural people well, they don't comprehend it at all. It's, again, it's just a, 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 a nice story to them. Verse 15, 16. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And so he's now telling the disciples, see, you guys are different, right? You guys have accepted the word of God. You all have accepted um, the fact that I am the son of God, that I was sent down. You all have accepted that. And you all have believed and put your trust in me, right? And he's telling them that for a specific reason. And we're going to see here when we get into verse 17. But again, when we think about the fact that, that, that these individuals, uh, these disciples, these 12 disciples were present with God in the flesh, right? They were pleasant, present with God in the flesh. And they, they, they accepted the things that were coming out of his mouth. They were blessed just from from that right there, just from being in his presence. Right. Just from 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 accepting the words that he was giving them. Right. 
because they had all the prophecies and they had all of the prophets that had foretold about this situation. And again, you know, who knows over time, you know, they may have had whatever feeling they may have had, but they, this particular group was the group that, that was chosen to be a part of what would be the early part of the church. Practical point that covers verse 16 is we should never take for granted the divine blessing of spiritual understanding. Again, we should never take for granted the divine blessing of spiritual understanding. And again, because they were there and, and God blessed them, right? And, and, and allow for their hearts to receive. Again, they were able to grow into the men that would go on to be, again, as I said, the pillars of the church, right? These would be the men who would go on and spread the gospel after Jesus has gone back to be with his father. Verse 17, for verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. And so this is what I was alluding to, because again, remember, these were regular men. These were uh, fishermen, tax collectors, right? These were just lay people, right? These were not people who were prophets or people who were religious leaders or, or, or even um, um, men who had a, a, a background or a, or a relationship, right? Compared to the prophets, the great prophets of old, like Isaiah, right? Who spoke continuously about the ministry, the, the suffering and death that would come to the Messiah, right? Unfortunately for him, he never got to see those things play out, not, on a, not, not physically, right? But here, these 12 disciples, they, they got to hear with their own ears. They got to see with their own eyes, right? No one had to tell them the Messiah was coming because he was right in front of them. Practical point that covers verse 17, the privilege of having God's full revelation obligates us to learn it and live it. Again, the privilege of having God's full revelation of obligates us to learn it and live it. So, again, if you know the truth, <laughs> you have no excuse. Right. You, you can't you can't be full of the word and and and, you know, try to live your life opposite of what it says. Right. We're going to talk about in next week less and next week's lesson, forgiving others. Right. And, 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 and part of forgiving others is, again, accepting that that comes from God. That is not something that comes from man, right? And so, again, when you, when you have that revelation and you know that God has called, called us to do something, well, then you do your best to make sure that you li your life lines up with what God has asked us or what God has called us to be. And so as we look at going back into verse 14, we look at Isaiah's prophecy, <clears throat> which covers 14 and 15. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah or Isaiah. By speaking in parables, Jesus also fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, speaking in a way that the hardened would hear, but not hear and see, but not see. Again, as I said, God is not a liar. So when he gave that revelation to Isaiah, it was going to come to pass. These words are quoted from Isaiah 6, verse 9 through 10. Isaiah 6 records the call of Isaiah to his prophetic ministry. He described how he saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and exalted, with seraphim around him proclaiming his holiness. Upon seeing this, Isaiah felt completely unworthy. Imagine that being in the presence of a holy God, right? And cried out, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Verse five. And what I love about this, this, this statement here that Isaiah made in verse five is he didn't try to make himself seem like he was above the freight. Right. He put himself right on the same level with those same corrupt people. Right. Those same corrupt individuals who were were worshiping idols and 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 had rejected God. Right. But he here he is a, 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 a righteous man who is in God's throne in his presence. 
but not saying, not, not feeling that, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm better than. So again, so he says, I'm undone because I'm in the midst of an unclean, I'm, I am a man of unclean lips and I am in the midst of a people of unclean lips. And I have been, and I have seen the Lord of hosts. One of the seraphim then took a live coal from the altar and touched Isaiah's mouth with it, proclaiming that his iniquity was taken away and his sin purged. Verse seven. After this, Isaiah heard God asking whom he could send with his message. Isaiah responded that he would go. God then commissioned him as a prophet to his people, to his people, Israel. Excuse me. It was at that point that God spoke the words that are being quoted here in Matthew or Matthew 13. As it turned out, this became a call to a very long and discouraging ministry for Isaiah. And see, again, that's why you see um, um, later on where he says, but blessed are you because you guys got to see. And there were other people who who longed to see what you guys are seeing. Right. It's unfortunate that 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 a majority of the people are rejecting it. But, you know, there were people that that again waited their whole life to be in you guys' position. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isaiah was, <clears throat> Isaiah was to tell the people to keep listening without understanding and to keep looking without perceiving. His ministry began around 739 BC prior to the captivity of the northern kingdom of Israel, which occurred in 722 BC. By then, Israel was so corrupt that God would not turn from his determination to punish her with captivity. Sadly, Judah, the southern kingdom, was also filled with corruption. The people's worship was largely empty ritualism, Isaiah 1, 10 through 15, and idolatry was rampant, verse chapter 40, verses 18 through 20, and chapter 46, 5 through 7. Since the heart of the people and since the heart of the people in Isaiah's day were already hardened against God, the more he preached, the more hardened they would become. As he ministered, their hearts would become increasingly dull. The meaning of make, excuse me, the meaning of make the heart of this people fat, chapter six, verse 10 of Matthew, their ears will become less receptive to his message and their eyes will remain blind to the truth. Again, they they had made their minds up. Right. So there was nothing that was going to be said that was going to soften that soil. <clears throat> they had reached a point in their rejection of God where he refused to enable them to turn back and be healed. Judgment was already on its way. And, and as we think about paralleling it to today, it's the same thing. Right. You know, you you only have an infinite amount. You don't have an infinite amount of time. We have a finite amount of time here on this side. And if you don't get right with God before you're finished, well, judgment, judgment is coming. So the same thing happened in Isaiah, the same thing that happened in Isaiah's day was now happening in Jesus's day. People had rejected God and the Messiah he had sent to fulfill Isaiah's prophecy was the third reason Jesus spoke in parables. Just as in Isaiah's time, there will be a remnant of believers. But on the whole, the people were rejecting him and would suffer the consequences. Here is a lesson for us as we turn to the Lord, acknowledging our need for him and our own powerlessness to help ourselves. He begins, the, excuse me, he begins his work of transformation and healing in our lives. Isaiah was right on target with his prophetic words. Again, those that, 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 that reject or those that harden their hearts, that it's just not going to, it's not going to make sense. It's just, you know, the disciples' blessings cover 16 through 17. The disciples were a great contrast to those <clears throat> who rejected Jesus. And as a result, they were unusually blessed, right? They had believed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah sent from God. Therefore, they were able to comprehend further spiritual truths. Now imagine that if you study, if you show yourself approved, there are going to be things that are going to be open to you. But again, it only happens when you open yourself up to it. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. They believed that Jesus was indeed the Messiah sent from God. Therefore, they were able to comprehend further spiritual truth. Using the same terminology, Jesus said their eyes could see and their ears could hear. That is completely the opposite of those who had no spiritual comprehension at all. 
This contrast still applies between believers and non-believers today. Perhaps the greatest privilege of all, the, of all was the fact that these disciples lived in the actual days of the Messiah's appearance and ministry. This is brought out by Jesus as saying that many prophets and righteous men from the past had a great desire to see the fulfillment of the things they spoke. Isaiah is an example for his words included many prophecies about the coming ministry and the death, excuse me, and the death of the Messiah. When he came to the end of his life, however, Isaiah had not seen any of those things come to pass. Listen to what Peter wrote about this subject. Though now ye see him not yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesies of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us did they minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. First Peter one, eight through 12. Today we rejoice in the full revelation of the salvation available through Jesus Christ. And isn't that wonderful, right? That the free gift of salvation, right? All you have to do is accept it. All you have to do is be willing to, to, to take on a servant mentality, to put yourself second. It, was a seri it is a serious thing to hear spiritual truth and then reject it. The ministries of all the Old Testament prophets emphasize this. They repeatedly warn Israel that God's judgment will come upon them if they continue to ignore his word. Right. The history of the Old Testament verifies that God's warnings came to pass. Both Israel and Judah went into captivity. Once once spiritual truth had been heard, the listeners became accountable for what they do with it again. You are accountable. Once it's been told to you, once you have a, a, a understanding, right? Well, the, all, of, all of that accountability falls on you. And, and what you like about what this is or what this says here is that God is the same, right? He's the same God that dealt with the children of Israel. He's the same God that, that, that was dealing with those people in Jesus' time. He's the same God that's dealing with us here today. Again, <laughs> if you continue to reject him, then you accept the judgment that comes with that. Let no one ignore the truth that salvation is the that salvation is only through Christ Jesus. To ignore this is to face eternal separation from God. Jesus wanted all his listeners to hear and understand. He wanted them all to understand that he was the king. He wanted them all to become part of his kingdom, but he knew that that was not going to happen. At every point in history, there have been those who listen with their hearts and those who listen with their heads. Right. The first group, God would reward with great with greater knowledge. The second group, God would punish with judgment. Again, we talked about it in the first part in, in part one. You don't just listen with your ears. Right. You listen with your heart. Right. And, 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 and you give a proper response. Right. When you're when you're when you're. When you're actively listening to someone. As we look at real life application and as we conclude this lesson, some of the most scholarly books that have ever been written about the Bible have been written by men who have come to the conclusion that it was just a book and not the word of God, which we talked about also. <clears throat> they have read it, but their hearts have not believed what it said. They are like the people of Christ's day who heard what they who heard with their ears and saw with their eyes, but were still blind and deaf spiritually. The same thing can happen to people today, especially young people. That's why it's very important, young people, that you guard yourself against this. And, and again, for everyone, but again, especially for young people <clears throat> who have been raised in the church. It is possible to know the events of Scripture without ever coming to believe in the hero of those events, right? 
The Bible is much more than a book of events. It is a revelation of God himself. If we do not come to know God through his book, we have no other way to know him. Often a Christian will come to a truth in the Bible he does not want to accept or refuses to obey. So again, the, 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 the word of God is, 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 is sharper than any two-edged sword, right? It, 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 it pierces through all of that, 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 that minutia, right? It gets right on through to the, to the point, right? And sometimes, you know, you hear a word or you, you stumble across a verse and you're not really stumbling. It's God put that verse there for you. And you don't like what you read because you're in the middle of whatever it is you're in the middle of and you don't want to come to grips or you don't want to admit, yeah, I'm wrong or yeah, God, you're right. And I need to turn from this. It will be at that point that his spiritual growth stagnates. So, again, once you decide that, OK, well, I'm, I'm just going to ignore this and I'm just going to I'm going to go my own way. Again, right there, your growth stops because, again, now you now, unfortunately for you, you are in error. Right. God gives greater truths to those who are willing to accept the light he has already given them. It is a great, great blessing to learn the word of God. And, and, and it really, truly is right. For those of you who are, are Bible proficient, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, but especially at a young age. But all must be aware of the subtle assumption that such knowledge makes him or her better than someone else. All right. We all know that individual that is, 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 is extremely knowledgeable in the Bible. Right. But they sometimes have a tendency to kind of, you know, no different than, than anybody in the, in, the, in, the, in the world. Right. Who may have a, a, a set of skills that that may be better than the person next to him. And so they 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 develop this 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 attitude, right? So again, happens in church as well, right? It shouldn't, but it does, unfortunately. But again, <clears throat> that subtle assumption that such not it makes him or her better than someone else. We must always remember that what we have spiritually comes because God has given it to us, right? You have that discernment because He has blessed you. Now you put in the work, but again, it was His will to give you that level of discernment. No one would understand divine truth unless God had given them that understanding. As Christians, we need to be reminded that others need their that others need their patience. Excuse me. As Christians, we need to be reminded that others need their patience if they do not have the same background in the Bible. Right. So, again, when you're when you're dealing with those who are still babes in Christ or those who are just coming into um, the fold again, Talk slow. Right. Understand that they're going to have some questions. Understand that they may not understand every concept. Right. They may not under or they may trip over things that 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 you may find trivial. Right. In the word. But again, remember, they're just starting out. You've been walking with them. Right. But they're just starting out. So, again, as as you are ministering and, and, and counseling someone, always remember that you have to be patient with them. Right. God is working in the hearts of the newcomers in the same way he is working in those who were raised in Sunday school. There is no place for favoritism and cliques in the church, even cliques that form out of the sense of superior knowledge of Scripture. Right. You unfortunately, you see that a lot. Right. You, you see these elite groups of, 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 of Bible students. Right. That kind of, you know, kind of keep that knowledge within, you know, their little their little group. And, you know. God doesn't want that. Right. If he's giving you that level of discernment, then disseminate it among the rest of the body. Right. So that they, too, again, if they are able to comprehend and able to to to, uh, uh, you know, understand. Right. But again, as as teachers, we all have the ability to break it down and make it plain. Right. And, 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 and share it on a level that any and everyone can understand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just because one person can quote, <laughs> just because one person can quote the books of the Bible does not mean he has the right to despise someone who cannot even find the gospel of John. Again, be patient. 
Every person who listens to the word of God needs to do a personal checkup concerning the condition of his heart. Just being present in class does not guarantee that listening took place. Again, remember, active listening, right? When you're in Sunday school on this Sunday, when you're in praise and worship, right? Active listening, when you're listening to the word on Sunday, active listening, right? Not just passive listening where you're, your mind is here, there, and everywhere, or you're, you're focused on your device or whatever may be going on, but you're not focused in on what, what's, 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 what's in truly important which is the word, or you're not present in the moment, right? Because your mind is elsewhere. <clears throat> one, way to check your, one way to check up on yourself is to talk to someone about the sermon or the lesson later on in the day, right? I, 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 find, I find that especially um, beneficial when I speak with my little one, right? When she comes home from church on Sunday, I'm asking her, well, hey, what did you get from today's sermon, you know? Or what was the title of the sermon? Right? Because again, if, if you get the title, then that tells me you, you more than likely paid attention to the rest of it. But if you can't tell me the title, then there's a there's a good chance, right? It doesn't happen in every case, but there's a good chance if you can't remember what the title of the lesson or the message was, you probably didn't pay attention to the, the scriptural reference references or the main points of that lesson so again it's always good to get with someone else and talk about what what was said in sunday school or what was said during sunday service so that you can kind of you know make sure that you understood or you heard what you heard <clears throat> another way especially in a classroom setting is it's okay it is it is okay to ask questions right a lot of times people just okay i don't i don't want to ask any questions Right. I don't want to keep us here any longer. I don't want to seem like, you know, um, you know, I don't want to seem like the dumb one. I don't want to seem like I'm not getting it. So I'm just going to eat my question. And, and then you go off not really understanding because you didn't ask the question. Listen, there are no dumb questions. Right. You just you ask. And, and again, a good teacher. Right. A, 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 again, they would they will break it down for you and they won't move on until you understand and if they got to take it uh if they got to do it uh or excuse me if they got to come after the class and and have a one-on-one -on -one session then they will but they're not gonna they're not gonna leave you behind but you got to open your mouth right because again most people don't read minds so again it is always good to ask questions especially if you don't understand something right <clears throat> So it is OK. It is it is OK to ask questions concerning those things. A person does not understand. Let the disciples be our examples. They were always asking Jesus questions after he taught. Again, remember, that is the whole that is the whole thing of this lesson. Right. They asked him, why are you speaking to them like that? And again, he answered them. The condition of the heart determines the reception of the word. The, the condition of the heart determines the reception of the word of God. A hard heart will result in blind eyes. A soft heart will result in open eyes. When a person truly desires to know him, God is both softening his heart and opening his eyes so that he would so that he believes the truth and understands his word. The person who hardens his heart will never understand God's word. So again, as we talked about, there's two responses, right? It's either you're going to accept and allow for his word to to transform you or you're going to reject it and then you'll face judgment. Right. And so as we've come to the end of this lesson, prayerfully, you guys are 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 ready for the weekend. Again, as we as we normally say at the end of the video, prayerfully, you're, you're going to spend time with your family and friends. You guys are going to have a great time. Prayerfully, you guys are going to have a great time on Sunday praying for the pray the Sunday school teachers and the praise team leaders and the men and women who are going to bring the word on this Sunday. Right. And I look forward to seeing you all next week where we will look at forgiving one another, which is happens to be a, a, a very big thing. Um, and we've talked about this in previous lessons. Right. It's, it's very, very important for everyone to make sure that you're not holding on to unforgiveness. And we'll talk about it more on next week. But Again, forgiving one another, Matthew 18, 21 through 35. And so, again, as 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 we normally do, for those of you who have not given yourself to the Lord, right, you, you do not know the pardoning of your sins. Right. Well, 
here's an opportunity, right? Here's an opportunity for you to say, you know what? I've, I've done it my way long enough. It hasn't worked out. I don't want to be one of those people who are left hard hearted. I don't want to be one of those people who end up separated from God for all eternity. Right. And so it's a very simple thing. Again, as we say, as we've started to say every week, salvation is easy as ABC. Admit that you have sinned for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. Listen, no one is no one. No one. No one can say that they are sinless. Right. All of us have sinned and all of us have to come to him and admit that, hey, I need you to forgive me for these sins. I need you to pardon me for these sins. Next, you need to believe that God believe in God's promise. Right. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him. Right. Shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John three sixteen. You have to believe. Right. It, it, it's, it's, it's more than just confessing with your mouth. You have to believe you. You have to put faith right together with 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 that action. Right. And so you believe that he sent his son and had his son died. Right. So that our sins could be forgiven. Confess that Jesus is Lord. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You will be saved. Romans 10, 9, for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you that you profess your faith and are saved. As scripture says, anyone who believes in him shall never be put to shame. So I don't care what anybody says. Right. If you put your trust and faith in him, no one's going to put you to shame. You don't worry about what the world thinks. You're not a citizen of the world anymore. If you said that, if you believe this in your heart, you've been you're saved. Heaven is rejoicing over you right now. You Jesus has sealed your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Right. The angels are rejoicing here at JMG. We are rejoicing for you. Now, this is that's the first step. The next step is to prayerfully find you a Bible believing church. With a man or woman of God who preaches the word of God, right? Plug in with that, that local body and, and, and allow them to, 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 to build you up as you're starting your new faith wall, right? And again, we're praying for you. We're, we're happy for those of you who've made that, that decision to give yourself over to the Lord. And again, develop a very strong prayer life. Get into your word, the word of God. That's your guide. But again, as I said, I look forward to seeing you all back next week on the corner. JMG Corner. Until then, everyone, have a great weekend and God bless.